been having these real thoughts lately. Like, is any of this real or not? How long have I been here? I can't remember what the sun looks like. Nothing but endless darkness has been my only friend. That voice again! It gets on my nerves. Dare you! Street Fighter V is a masterpiece! Stop! Stop it! Stop putting my game down! That's it, Cammy. The source of your power. No! Get out of my head! Don't fight it. Give in to your wrath. Unleash your raid. No, oh, give in to your- Fade! Winkle, what the fuck? I told you to keep out of here. <laughs> oh my, I didn't know you were this kind of girl, Claire. Mind if I watch? Huh? 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 Toko. Jack. I'm in no mood to deal with you. Can't you see I'm busy trying to brainwash her? <laughs> Call it whatever you want. I will cut you. Too many voices in my head. Get out of my head. Avatar Korra, I finally found you. Damn it. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> yes. Can't you see me you're busy with that orgy? Jack, it's not an orgy. Huh? Huh? Well, we're in a dark room. Just the four, the five of us now. Winkle, you're not helping. I was thinking of ordering a pizza. Do it. Yeah. Cheese bread. Cheese it. How many times must I repeat myself, Azula? It would be a bad idea to order a pizza to our secret HQ. Winkle's sad now. Screw it. Stop it. Seriously, will you all shut the fuck up and get out of this room? Avatar Korra, you woke up baby Saturn. Kick it. And then there's a bloody baby crying. Get out of my head. The fuck? Uh, it's a little early for Chris. What the fuck is that? Are raccoons up there? Oh my god, Cammy! Where have you been? I mean, I know I teleported you using my share again. Was it my share again? Or was it the phone app I have? You know, I have a phone app for that. But you can't believe what I've been through the past like year and a half. A uh, core phone, Pogs, um, Adam died many, many times. Lightning came through time, I think, through time. And uh, she started, you know, me playing her trilogy, which by the way was a terrible experience, or at least the first two. Uh, she came around Christmas. And, you know, I, I met Santa Claus, the real Santa Claus. I was a good boy. And, uh,. Oh my god, oh, and then- The fuck? Stings, doesn't it? Your voice irritates me! When did you get a bad French accent? Nothing can stop me now! Cammy, Cammy, I know you might be mad about me teleporting you and shit, but I've been through a lot more worse than you have. A beautiful death, just for you. Yes, yes, finish him, Cammy, do it! Yes, me master suffer! She's going to kill him. Eh? I brainwashed her to reach her potential and be an ultimate killing machine just for Pogs. We need to have a chitty chat chat. Nothing can change me. Play this. Oh, come on, Cammy. That's not even a Street Fighter game. I mean, I, I know it's made by Capcom, but, you know, still. Foolish boy. Get started. Or perish. Azura's Wrath is a character action video game developed by CyberConnect2 and published by Capcom. It was released worldwide in February 2012. The story is presented in a style and format of an episodic series of cinematic scenes, including opening and closing credits, with the gameplay being integrated into cinematics where players switch between third-person combat and interactive sequences with player input in the form of quick time event button prompts. Because of its unique style, the game has been described in the media as interactive anime, and it beautifully takes Hindu and Buddhist mythology and blends it together with science fiction in one epic story. The dub, tell me it was good. Actually, yeah, most of the English cast is well voiced, maybe except for Deus. His lines during certain parts is very hard to hear, but I guess that could be playing a bad sound design. The main character, Asura himself, is voiced by none other than Liam O'Brien. <laughs> I'm surprised it's your only reaction. I can still hear lightning even though she's lost through time, screaming with ecstasy. I forgot how to be happy. I'm just feeling so much bloody rage right now. Huh. 
The game begins with a beautiful scene of Earth from space when suddenly warships, shit tons of warships, and the main character is Sura sitting there on one of the ships posing like the badass boss he is. And again, like the badass he is, he decides to look this scary dark cloud dead in the eye and thinks, Nah, I'll just jump into this bitch. And he does. We then learn that the spooky fur clouds is in fact filled with a horrible monstrosity called Goma, including these ugly ass fish things. So we aren't really given the controls right away, except that Y is a lock-on option. You just start flying through space, throwing fireballs at the fish, squids, and rocks? Just anything that's all black and red, after a bit of time for some exposition. So this whole army is called the Shinkugu Fleet, and they're based out of the Karma Fortress. They rely on the power of Mantra, basically the life energy of the entire universe. Easy Cammy, deep breaths, goose fries. I'll find your goose! That's not what I mean, holy shit. So these guys are all based off the Hindu gods, but I'm not really familiar with the Hindu gods. And they made of what looks like clay and bits of technology. This is fucking awesome. And the story goes on, we're introduced to the rest of the eight generals. But enough about them, let's get on the, holy shit, hang on, what the fuck is that? I don't want to know its name, I don't want to know what the fuck it is! In the LED declaration, Flitza is a serpent or dragon, the personification of drought in the Abbasari of Indra. He identified as an Asura. Flitza was also known as the debate of Ahi. He appears as a dragon popping the closet with us. It is heroically slain by Indra. Sacre de Hassan! Uh... Keep playing! Merde! So this thing pops out of the world, it just destroys down near the entire fleet. So we get to blow other things up, and of course get shit on by Vitra. But luckily our daughter is this high priestess and at least she's on limit break, allowing us to grow some extra arms, totally badass by the way, and then we punch the ever-living shit out of this thing's dumb ugly face. Who tainted Claire? Yeah, uh, right, um, what's with the French? Is something, you know, something wrong with you? The only thing wrong with me is that I had to deal with your sorry, pathetic ass! That's her. <sighs> Worthless. Uh, where are we gone? <laughs> we get a good scene of a robot delivering news that we killed the monster and another of are meeting up with his wife and daughter and learning that the Emperor wants to reward us. And I'm sure everyone can see where this is going. Because what's a good story about a hero without a little bit of betrayal and being framed? They go hand in hand. Like pineapple on pizza. What the fuck's wrong with you? Stop judging me! Oh, I'm totally judging you. In any case, after a big fight gets a bunch of henchmen, we get to fight one of the other generals to try and prove our innocence. But of course, it doesn't happen that way. But hey, once again, we are shown how badass we are, and we have to do this fight while wearing this newest fashion statement. Back spears. That's right. You two can be just as badass as Sasura. You only need to have nine big ass spears shoved into your back. After this fight comes the ultimate blow. The wife has been murdered. Oh wait, no, sorry. Ultimate blow is right here. The daughter has been kidnapped by the other generals, and now, oh god, he's monologuing. There's nothing more annoying than a villain monologuing. Going on and on for minutes about how brilliant they are, how foolproof their town is, how they're going to take over the world, and that there's nothing the hero can do to stop them. Well, anyway, after we once again get our ass handed to us, we're thrown off the Karma Fortress or set plummeting to the planet below. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that after each chapter of this game, there's a brief slideshow that helps explain the story further. I really enjoy this, as well as have the entire game basically feels like an anime show. Very refreshing. But after that, we find ourselves in what is basically hell, or Naraka if we want to stick with the Hindu thing. And we met by this mysterious golden 
spider. And they were given the prompt to begin climbing out this ship by using the tower, which somehow we managed to grab onto while falling. Well, whatever. The sword that make it even bipping. When they do find you that something was wrong, they... Hey, wait do Momo. When did we get here? Welcome back! Are we done now? Play the fucking game. So as we're climbing up, we're giving a flashback to when apparently Asura was training with his old master August, and now we are a full tutorial over every action and fight style and movement, just everything in the game, as congratulations we get to fight August himself, but only after he does this weird finger thing. Gross. Yeah, just a bit. And after that flashback, we get another one right after we were framed, and because of everything that had happened, this next part is completely justified. Sir literally breaks out of hell with just his anger, so bad ass, and we then learned that 12,000 years have passed as we were thrown from the fortress by Diaz. That ass hat run away to a small village to find some humans, mortals, praying to a relic as they praying they are suddenly attacked by Monkey Goma. And as we of course kill them all like a badass, something else happens. One of those giant ass spaceships comes down and drops off those creepy ass robot guards from the fortress, including a big fat one. They was in the uncanny. What do you mean? You're very hurtful today. I don't care! After some time, there's a pretty big Goma showing up, and oh, never mind, he's dead. Yet another so called good guy shows up. This time it's Wizen. You remember him? He's the guy we fought while we had all those giant spears on our back. This fight is pretty much a repeat of last time we met him. However, there's one big difference Wizen goes nuclear and gets fucked off big, and we then learn about how these newly named seven identities are using a Sarah's daughter as a mantra enhancer after sucking out all the energy from all the souls and just keeping it for themselves while having her boost it. Hence the nuclear Wizen. I need this power. I need to kill everything. Yeah, we'll get into that later why that's, you know, not a good thing and impossible. Rage! Yeah. In any case, after a bit of a fight with Gigantor, we get fisted! Pretty hard, too. And then we get one of the greatest video game prompts in history. This little guy right here. Suffer. This guy lets you interrupt all the annoying and meaningless monologues whenever you want in the best possible way. Yes! Oh! Oh, fuck! Why do you do that? It popped up. So every time it's gonna pop up, you're gonna punch me? Oh, fuck you. Oh. In any case, it's our turn to do some fisting now. I'm gonna shove my rage so deep inside this fat fuck with all six of my glowy metal arms. Oh yes, that was satisfying. Wait for it. I don't want to. I said wait! Of course it's obvious. This isn't even his final form. And instead of fisting us, he's just gonna finger us. An entire continent. But you know what? Fuck that. Fuck him. Fuck this whole thing. I'm not a fucking Sura. My rage is beyond maximum. <laughs>
And after all of that, it's time for my mysterious stranger visit. Next time. And we now face Yasha with no arms. Literally, all you do is kick and hit by him. Oh, did that mention Yasha is Yashura's brother-in-law? Yeah, that's right, he's Mithra's uncle. What an asshole. And we see him not fully phase him either. Another fight. Oh, by the way, every level has this meter with your health and a burst meter. As you damage your foes or destroy ships, the burst meter fills, and once it's full, you can hit R2 and trigger the next sequence of events. So basically, get your burst meter full and burst before your health is gone. Not that hard. My power is... is... Tell me, you need to calm down, you're gonna burst! Oh my god, he's cut down for What the fuck does that mean? Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm a shetty? Dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? Burring. Yes, and I will say it again. Your daughter is devoted to the cause in order to save the world. Do you think you are? Damn, dude, he is ugly as ever. But Yasha's having enough of this shit, finished off Asura once and for all, and Asura slowly falls into lava, thus dying again. Thus ends part 1, suffering. And part 2 rebirth begins with us back in Naraka, but this time Asura's eyes are still white, so he died with his wrath, it looks like, and thus he climbs his tower again with more flashbacks. Yay! I'm just getting past these, you fight several Goma, including Elephant 1, and we get this funny scene. So yeah, we see in the next scene, Azura is kind of awkward around his daughter. Doesn't know what to do when she is crying, but still kills for her deeply. Which makes him rage even more in the present, because he can't stand her crying. 500 years past, Azura's body has been excavated and worshipped by a small village, coming back to life as he encounters a young girl resembling Mithra. But fuck that! Goma attack! One grabs her and we make chase, only to finally catch up with the first sucker punch it and saving this girl. Only fight the worst goddamn Goma in the game, this tortoise. Likes to spin around and do knockbacks all the while spamming fireballs. What the fuck? Seriously. Right, Cammy? 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 Cammy, will you just finish him already? No one finishes my master unless it's his little piggy. Me. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Huh? Huh? Did somebody order me a cheese pizza? <laughs> we did. But if you want me, somebody has to barf it all up. <laughs> Michael wants her cheese pizza. The pepperonis of the. Yeah, the same. This bitch must die. Hide her. Cammy, Cammy, Cammy. What? God, jeez, no, never mind. So the citizens in this village start to pray to Asura, who, well, doesn't really want it when Carlos forces arrive and start killing the people to collect their souls, aka Matra, aka Mitha will answer powers. Asura's like, fuck that noise, we kill them, Carlos escapes, saved the little girl that looks like Mitha, she's crying, Asura punches the ground so hard and launches towards the fleet. Yeah, he punches the ground so hard to launch himself in the sky. Yeah, fuck Mario, Asura's so badass, he just has to punch the ground hard enough to launch himself into the damn atmosphere. You're a disease. Just like that, Michael. Ouch. So the next few levels is Asura falling higher than the ships themselves, destroying as many as he can. Or till his burst is full for the next scene to play. See the story of the Rasen Gun, or any Naruto move in general. Is that how they control the ship? God, now I want to see a movie called Naruto in Space. Huh. While they're getting shot at, Asura grows his other forearms, destroys some more ships, even getting blown point blank. 
but still survives and invades Carlos' main ship. Starts some shit. And I mean a lot of shit. And I mean so much bursts and shit going down all throughout this ship. We try to shut up Carlo, but it seems he has retreated through an escape pod, but Sir doesn't care. He just wants a nice hug. Broly, be a good boy. Show your daddy the love he has shown you. Hug. Sir plummets to the earth once again, and looks like August is going to go finish the job, and we get the best scene in the game, TITS! <clears throat> so this episode pretty much, you know, you get drunk, enjoy the bath, splash the girl, chug chug chug, and then go for the goal. The most animated scene I've seen in a video game in a long time. More flashbacks against another goddamn tortoise. Fuck you! And yeah, it's with them both setting up. Episode ends and we jump to the next one. But they're on the fucking moon? What? How? When? Huh? What? 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 Hmm. How excellent. Yeah, so we now fight once former master on the moon because fuck it, we need to top the last boss fight, right? With Symphony Number 9 playing in the background. Huh. Weird. The fight escalates. August draws his sword and you extend. Oh. Ah, try to counter him whenever you can for a quick meter fill for burst, and we plumb to Earth again. What the fuck is up with a sir falling to Earth? I don't fight for good, and I don't fight for evil. I just fight. I will say it once more. I am you, and you are me. I am nothing like you. So a sir manages to break the sword, catches the blade by its hilt with his mouth like Solo and finishes August. A high level Goma is coming and sir grabs the sword with his teeth again and runs at it. EXPLOSION! Oh, and if you have the money, you download a short, beautifully animated scene about how sir killed the Goma, but it's not needed. I think the idea of sir running at the creature in an explosion is fine because it's suspenseful. It leaves the fight to your imagination. Downloading a paid, by the way, anime cutscene is not worth it. Honestly, you want to see it? Just look it up on YouTube. It's there and it's free. So Sir may have died again, he looks all ash and statue-like, but luckily it seems only a few days may have passed this time, oh thank god. Asura has been detected! Asura, that half-witted baboon. I will not allow him to interfere with Lord Deus's plans any further. All ships, commence purification! Yeah, fuck this bitch, Olga. Is there a stare? Fuck him. Scorch Earth, collect the soul. Several fights with no arms against minions and while getting really pissed because the so called gods are just collecting souls, not really saving anybody. However, Olga does another Scorch Earth right around the time the girl that looks like Mithra, who's been following Sura everywhere, comes running up to him. And Liam in the aftermath of Scorch Earth probably does one of his best vocal works for any character he's done at this point. Pure rage and pain.
So we just start nuking Olga's fleet, even when she summons more in an aid to stop a sewer. We just fuck shit up. And rebirth ends. My god, what a way to end that part. Shit! Old Spice! What? Old Spice! Old Spice! You're beginning to scare me. Old Spice, did you spell you? The fuck does that mean? Old Spice! Anywho, Yasha begins to question how it serves power to pass the power that took the seven deities 12,000 years to attain. But none of that, because Olga, fearing as her too much a threat, summons the Bamastra and plans to use the mantra they have in the 12,000 years to destroy Asura. Yasha not happy how Olga wants to waste the souls of the dead, even stating as long as the mortals, basically their supply is endless. A demigod gotta do what a demigod gotta do, and Yasha sets off to stop her. I'm pretty sure you birched that straight to hell. Old Spice! So we now play as Yasha, the next couple of levels. He's much faster than Sura and shoots faster as well. It's alright. I mentioned the music in this game. The game incorporates Asian themed songs as well as Western ones, like the song that plays for Yasha. It's beautiful. After you run through pretty much the whole Bomaster ship, Yasha kinda has second thoughts. But in the end, Yasha overcomes his doubts and kicks the head aside, thus pushing the blast away from Asura, who has disappeared. Following his actions, Deus orders Yasha under the supervision of Sergei to strike at the Goma attacking human city. Yasha tries to eliminate all the Goma but is unable and Sergei bombards both them and the city for more souls. As Yasha has commanded from space most of the time in these, I guess, 15,000 years, he only now realizes the needless mass slaughter of humans for Matra. It's the same thing you've been doing for the past 12,000 years. You just fought a meaningless battle. <laughs> How ugly. One way or another, we must gather souls for Mantra. For the Brahmastra. The Goma's behavior has been more restive of late. That is to say, Vlitter's return is approaching. <sighs> you remember what our duty is, do you not? Dirty their hands. That melancholy face of yours truly suits you the most. <laughs> <laughs> Tarkora, but she's very persuasive. Snip, snip, snip! <laughs> that pretty boy Zuko definitely couldn't see me coming. <laughs> oh my god. 
You killed Zuko. Never mind. Deal with that later. Get out of the way. No. Mr. is all mine. I'm his good little piggy. Give me the damn mic. Damn it. No. Zula, do something. Right, Avatar Korra. I've got this. Did you just kick her there? It seemed like the best course of action. A cunt punch, huh? Oh, I'm going to enjoy cutting you more than any girl I ever have. Get those scissors away from me! Snip, snip, snip! <laughs> Will you two stop fighting, damn it? Wait a sec. Is this mic on? Testing. Testing. One, two. Testing. Shit. She's talking with our voices. Oh god, Jack! Yeah! Get out of my head! You're all kinds of fucked up right now. Who do you think took me from? Who do you think I took from? <laughs> it was I. I killed your precious sister. <laughs> I thought you would show me a more beautiful face than you. I... I knew. <laughs> I see. So you chose the cause over your own sister. Bravo! You deserve a treat, loyal dog of Deus. <laughs> So after that fucked up shit, Yasha hoping to tone for his sins faces Asura. This fight isn't too hard with Yasha's speed, but this is where I learned that the Y move can't be in cooldown in order to do counters. Which trust me, for some quick burst meteor feeling, you want to counter as much as you can from this point on. Once the mask is off, Yasha begins to get serious with Asura and the real fight begins. Again, not too hard, watch for the counters and AoE and the fight is over before you know it. I really suck here, I know, this is what happens when you don't pay attention. Kill yourself! That's hurtful, Cammy. Jeez. So is this! 